Hello and welcome along to the channel. So today's watch is one of my favorite type of watches to make a video on. It doesn't tend to get a huge amount of clicks and views because it's not a big name, but it's a watch that I think deserves a lot more attention. It's a really well done, great all round micro brand option. And it was only after posting my video on how I failed with my micro brand, I had a comment from Nick, the owner of Orion Watches, and we got talking and I was super happy to borrow this particular watch because I think it looks great. And when I got the watch, I wasn't disappointed. Should we get into the review? So specs on the Burgundy Beauty in front of us. It's a 39 millimeter diameter case 10.3 millimeters thick, so basically not very. 20 millimeters in lug width, 120 grams of weight, and that is sized for my 17 and a half centimeter wrist. There is a 100 meter water resistance rating, and the screw down crown does give you a little bit of extra protection. 47 millimeters lug to lug. Sapphire crystal, of course, on the front there. And this is powered by the trusty Highbeat Miyota 9039. So let's talk design. And this is a, a very interesting watch, which is why I was quite excited to show it to you and have it featured on the channel. Of course, you will notice that burgundy and yellow color combo, which I think is my favorite color combo offered by Orion. This watch is available in a couple of other colors and you can check them out online. But for me, this is the one that stands out as something unique and something quite special. The vintage rally track that runs around the outside of the dial that serves as essentially minute markers and it looks so cool on this. Obviously, you'll see design inspirations from other watches in this Orion watch, but nothing that makes it even really a homage. It's still very much its own thing. Looking closer at the dial and you'll see there is a very nice sunburst effect on this. Now it's not a very dark shade of burgundy. It is quite bright and that means the advantage is that in low light you still get the effect of the burgundy. The Bullover Jetstar that I showed a little while back, that one had a much darker red dial, more of a maroon. And the issue with that was that in low light, it looked almost black, so you kind of lose the effect unless you were in really good light. That isn't an issue here. The indices are, of course, applied, and they have some nice angles and chamfers cut into them. And that, of course, means you get the light catching effect with wrist rolls and with direct sunlight. It elevates the watch, and I'm glad that the attention to detail has really gone on the indices. And there's more attention to detail when you look at the hands. These hands are diamond cut. So unlike on some of the cheaper watches where under macro, you'll sort of see, let's say some rough edges around the hands. You don't get that with this watch. Diamond cut hands feature prominently in more expensive watches, typically closer to the thousand dollar mark and upwards. So it's great to see a high quality handset combined with the really nice indices on this watch. And one of the highlights for this watch is, of course, the vibrant yellow seconds hand, which works really well with the burgundy. I'm really impressed. From the pictures, I wasn't 100% sure on this. In person, I think, yeah, I'm absolutely sold. Bright yellow, sunburst burgundy, fantastic. Maybe you should have a shot every time I say the word burgundy in this review. I feel like I've already said it far too many times. I'll try and scale it back. So that pretty much covers the dial and the handset. Of course, there is the Orion logo printed at the 12 o'clock and then Sylph, name of the watch, and automatic, in case you didn't know. But not too much text on the dial. If you've watched any of my videos before, I always applaud minimal text on dials. How about the case on this one? Well, it's really nicely finished. Something that I always appreciate on sub thousand dollar watches is nicely finished chamfers. So you've got the brushing and the polishing on the case here, and you've got nice polished surfaces, very refined. It's only a small portion, but it makes all the difference on the angle there where it's polished in terms of elevating the case and making it feel more premium. 
No complaints with the brushing on the case. It's all done to a very high standard. And something else that's very interesting in the design sat on top of the case is of course the bezel. And this one is concave. And I don't think I've seen many watches. I'm trying to think of another one that has a concave bezel. They always tend to be convex. So this one is a really nice addition to the watch. That concave creates an illusion, I think, of a smaller watch, and that suits the vintage aesthetic. A chunky bezel would look really out of place on this watch. The crown is an absolute pleasure to use with this piece. It protrudes really nicely from the case. There's no crown guards, again, in line with that vintage theme. And although the crown is relatively narrow, it's got a great diameter and a really nice grip. I suppose it works in the same way as a skinny tire on a car driving through snow. It kind of just digs in. So it's really nice to use, it's very smooth, and as I mentioned earlier on, it is of course screwed down. You will see the Orion logo is engraved on the side of the crown through a polished surface, so that's nice to see. The bracelet on this watch is something a little bit different. It's a mixture of brushing and polishing. Majority is brushed, but you've got these small polished edges just in the center of the links and they're visible when you will do a wrist roll and when the bracelet is articulated. There's five holes of micro adjust on the clasp. It's a pressed outer and a milled inner. And the case back, relatively simple. It's a full polish. It's attached with six small screws and there is a constellation, I believe the Orion constellation, engraved in the back of it, but I am not at all qualified to confirm that. Something I mentioned earlier with the watch is it's very slim, and I think a large part of this is down to using a movement like the Miyota 9 series, which enables you to achieve thicknesses sub 11 millimeters with still good water resistance. So this was a great choice of movement in my opinion, something you need to be aware of if you haven't had Miyotas before, you do get that wobble from the rotor, and it is relatively audible in this watch, so you will feel it. I'm neither here nor there about it, I don't really care. I know it irritates a lot of people, but ultimately it's a mechanical watch, so I don't mind feeling it being mechanical. Putting this one on the time grapher, it's running fantastically well, alternating plus two, plus three seconds a day, so really excellent performance. And that takes me on to another point. So on the time grapher, this watch looks really good. So I messaged Nick, the brand owner, and I asked him if he had regulated it. And he said he hadn't, and he brought up some good points about regulation, which I think are worth to mention in this video. The first point is that in his experience as a brand owner and as a watchmaker, perhaps the biggest difference on how the movements perform is on where the movements come from. And he makes the point that a lot of brands are supplied the movements by their factory, but they don't have any traceability on the movements. So what does this mean? Well, it means in effect, the movement could have been sat around for a long time, it might have even come off of a watch that had been previously returned. It might have been recycled, put back into stock. You kind of just don't know. And the second point on the topic of regulation, which is something that I did consider actually when I was trying to start my own brand, is that with NH movements or some of the entry level Miota movements, these are not super high end Swiss movements. And so you tend to find the positional variance, the timekeeping in different positions varies quite wildly so for an example I often put the watches face up on my time grapher and of course it provides some feedback on how the watch is running but I know if I change the position into six or seven different places then the cheaper the movement the more variation there's going to be and so for the time it would take on each watch to regulate these movements and still struggle with the positional variance he doesn't bother although he does on the Swiss movements and he makes these points to make you kind of aware when you're looking at lower cost watches and brands working with entry level Seiko and Miyota movements, when they say regulated, what do they actually mean? Because you've still got very high positional variance. And generally speaking, especially with these Miyota 9 series, they do tend to actually run quite well out of the factory. Before we get into the pros and cons, let's talk Loom. And this one does really well, actually. So of course, smaller indices around the dial, but the hour hand and the minute hand have excellent loom, although it's not as instantly bright as the green loom you'll see on the Proxima. Actually, in terms of longevity, 
It does fantastically well, and I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. It's certainly very functional, and for this style of watch, I would say it punches well above the average. So let's go into the pros and cons, and let's start with the pros. For me, the best thing about this is it's a unique and interesting vintage design. It's got all the benefits of modern watchmaking, but it's picked some really interesting elements from vintage watches, especially the rally style minutes track running around the edge of the dial in this colorway as well, I think is really good choices. So you may have noticed in the specs, we've got a combination here of something that's lightweight, slim, and only 39 millimeters. That sort of delicious cocktail means we've got something supremely comfortable. And not only that, but also a watch that will work very well on smaller wrists. The extra effort to make sure you have a diamond cut handset and the effort to put the angles on the indices means that it feels very refined in terms of the dial and the handset. And as I might have mentioned, it definitely punches above the price point. So that's 100% a positive with this piece. But although I have many nice things to say about this watch, there is of course some drawbacks like with any piece. With this style of watch, it's great to try with different straps. And I think either drilled lugs would be nice or quick release if not, because not everybody wants to have holes in the side of the case but I appreciate some people find it a turn off. So yeah, definitely quick release would be a good addition. The next point is the price and no, it's not cheap. 725 US dollars is a lot for a micro brand in a cost of living crisis. And I appreciate that. Now is the watch bad value? No, but you have to appreciate the finer details to really get the most out of this watch and probably to want to pay the asking price on this. The great comfort, the fantastic brushing on the case and the diamond cut hands are all very premium features. But there's really stiff competition. If you look at Baltic with their Hermetique, I think it's pronounced, that is a vintage style watch, also very compact, Miyota 9039, 150 meters of water resistance, and it is coming in cheaper at less than 600 US dollars. It doesn't have nice chamfers on the case that are finely polished. It doesn't have diamond cut hands and it doesn't have a bracelet. So in theory, it should be cheaper. But my point is this, I think in current times, people are tightening the purse strings a bit. So it's really important with this watch to either trust the reviewer or have it in hand to really appreciate these things before you buy the watch. And yes, that probably does make the price point a little bit more challenging. The final point is something very specific to me, is that I just don't like high polish case backs. They scratch so easily, they look good when the watch comes out the box for the very first time, and then never again. And although you can polish them, wouldn't it be better to have it brushed, and then you don't need to worry every time you put your watch down that the bracelet is gonna scratch it all up and make it look like the dog's dinner. Yes or no, this is your last chance, no beating around the bush. So to conclude with this watch, I really enjoyed spending time with it. It's nice to always find unique and interesting looking micro brands. And I think generally most of the micro brands that are doing well in today's space are creating original designs or genuine homages that take a lot of inspiration from other pieces, but don't look specifically like something else. And that's what I think this Orion Sylph has achieved. The fact that it is lightweight and the fact that the dimensions are compact means it's super comfortable. I would recommend it as an everyday watch. Something that you are not gonna find is uncomfortable over a long period of time. I really enjoyed it. There was obviously a few nitpicks, a few minor things, but I will always find those on every watch. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this Orion? Would you buy this watch? Or do you think there is a better alternative? I always enjoy reading your comments. I try to reply to as many as I can. And thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video where we will tuck into the age laser from my update video. I'll show you the skeletonization on that and then we will run the prize draw and make sure that somebody gets that watch for free. Anyway, until then, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.